Today, we're going to be solving a problem from a final exam. And here it is. It's about a matrix A, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And we know that this matrix has two eigenvalues, 1 and 2. And we also know that if we do elimination, the first two pivots will be 1 and 1. And here are two questions about this, pro this matrix. The first one is find lambda 3 and d3, the third eigenvalue and the third pivot. And the second one asks you, what is the smallest a33? So if you can change this entry, what is the smallest number that you can put there that will make the matrix A positive semi-definite? And also, if instead of changing that entry, you do A plus CI, what is the smallest number C that will make that matrix A plus CY positive semi-definite? There's also a third part to the question, but we'll get to that later. Why don't you hit pause and work on these two parts? And when you're ready, come back, and I'll show you how I did it. Hi. I hope you managed to do parts A and B. Let's work on it together. Part A. Well, you want to know what the third eigenvalue is. And you know what the first two are. What else do you know about eigenvalues in the matrix? You know that the sum of all the eigenvalues of the matrix is equal to the trace of the matrix. So lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is equal to the trace of the matrix. In this case, you have 1 plus 2 plus lambda 3 equals to the trace. The trace is the sum of the diagonal entries. So come over here. The trace is 1 plus 1 plus 0. The trace is equal to 2. So we have 3 plus lambda 3 is equal to 2. So lambda 3 is equal to minus 1. On to the third pivot. We don't really want to do elimination. That would take too long. So there must be some trick that we can use. Well, we have the first two pivots, and we want to know the third. Remember, when you do elimination steps, that does not change the determinant of the matrix. And you're left with an upper triangular. So the determinant of that matrix will be d1 times d2 times d3. And it will still be equal to the determinant of A. I guess there's a small caveat that I should point out. The pivots are not always the diagonal entries. It might be that one of the diagonal entries will be 0. That happens if the matrix is singular. But here, all my three eigenvalues are non-zero. They are 1, 2, and minus 1. So that won't happen. So this is actually possible to do. The product of the three pivots will be equal to the determinant of A. And the determinant of A is the product of the eigenvalues. 1 times 2 times minus 1. So it's equal to minus 2. 1 times 1 times d3 is equal to minus 2. Here's your third pivot, d3. That finishes part A. Is that the result that you got? Let's do part B. What is the smallest a33 entry that would make the matrix positive semi-definite? Well, first of all, note that a is not positive semi-definite yet. The eigenvalues are 1, 2, and minus 1. Minus 1 is negative, so the matrix is not positive definite and not even positive semi-definite. Positive semi-definite means that all the eigenvalues will be either positive or 0, that is, non-negative. So our matrix will be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And we're allowed to change this third entry. How do we find, how do we figure out if this matrix is positive semi-definite or not? Well, I was talking about the eigenvalues, but maybe the easiest way is to do the determinant test. The determinant of the small one by one left uppermost matrix is one. The determinant of the two by two upper leftmost matrix is one times one minus 0 times 0, 1, also positive. 
So we need to check that the determinant of the whole matrix will also be non-negative. So what is the determinant of this matrix? It is equal to, it's a three by three matrix, so do you know how to do it quickly? There's this um, way that only works for three by three and not for bigger, which is the determinant will be one times one times A33 plus zero times one times one, that's zero, plus one times zero times one, that's zero again, minus one times one times one, minus one times one times one, minus A33 times zero times zero, that's zero. So this is the determinant, is A33 minus two, and I want it to be greater than or equal to zero. This will guarantee that the matrix is positive semi-definite. So A33 must be bigger than or equal to two. The smallest value for A33 that will make the matrix positive semi-definite is two. There's another part to the question still, which is what is the smallest C that will make the matrix A plus CI positive semi-definite? How should we do this? The quickest way is to do the eigenvalue test. A has eigenvalues uh, 1, 2, and minus 1. So A plus CI has eigenvalues. Well, you're just adding CI to the matrix. And in this particular case, you should know by now that that keeps the eigenvectors the same and adds the number C to each of the eigenvalues. And I want each one of these to be non-negative. For that to be true, I have to have C greater or than or equal to 1. C greater than or equal to 1. So the smallest value that C can take that will make the matrix A positive semi-definite is 1. Well, that solves parts A and B of this question. Um, there is a part C to this question. Let me show it to you. It says, starting with one of these three vectors, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, or 0, 0, 3, and with uk plus 1 equals to a half of a times uk, what is the limit behavior of uk as k goes to infinity? I've written the matrix 1 half of a here for your convenience. And now you can hit pause and work on it. And when you're ready, we'll uh, get back and solve it together. All right, I hope you managed to solve this one. Now let's do it together. Well, if you've noticed, the matrix 1 half of A is a Markov matrix. So there are all these uh, results about Markov matrices and steady states and so on. Usually, Markov matrices have a unique steady state. But that is only true when there are no non-zero entries. But here, there are. So we can't guarantee that there's a unique steady state. What we can do is look at the eigenvalues and see if this is still true nonetheless. What are the eigenvalues of A, of 1 half of A? Well. If you remember from part A, the eigenvalues of A were 1, 2, and minus 1. So the eigenvalues of 1 half of A, taking a multiple does not change the eigenvector, but it changes the eigenvalue in the same, by the same multiple, will be 1 half, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and minus 1 half. So here are the eigenvalues of A. And there's only one eigenvalue that has absolute value equals to 1. So you actually still, still get a unique steady state vector. So everything is fine. We can proceed as usual. And the usual procedure 
is you find the eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue 1. And that will be the limit behavior as k goes to infinity of uk. So what is the eigenvector corresponding to 1? Eigenvector. Well, you already know how to do this. So I will just write the solution. It is 1, 1, 1. That means that uk, as k goes to infinity, will go to, will converge to some appropriate multiple of this eigenvector 1, 1, 1. How do you know which multiple to use? Well, as usual in Markov matrices, when you do an iteration of the process, when you do uk plus 1 is equal to 1 half of a times uk, that does not change the sum of the entries of the vector uk. So whatever the sum was here, it will still be the same here. If you go all the way back and you start with u0, whatever the sum of the entries was here, that's what it will be all the way through u1, u2, u3, and so on, all the way to the steady state u infinity. So whatever the multiple of u1 of 1, 1, 1 is, it has to have the sum of these entries add up to 3. Well, that's already there. We already, we happen to pick the correct eigenvector, so that's very convenient. The correct multiple is simply the vector 1, 1, 1. So the limit behavior of uk as k goes to infinity is u infinity equal to 1, 1, 1. We're done. Thank you.